So a while back, I made a video about how to add a water pump to a portable air conditioning unit. And I also recently made a platform that anybody can build out of plywood to prop up the AC and add a slight angle for the water to drain out. But a lot of people saw a blue little hose going into the unit and was wondering what that was. Well, that was a very bad air return that I just had laying around the room. So after lots of comments and talking back and forth, I finally designed a plan to add a four inch insulated return with a valve to my air conditioner. And here's how I did it. Hey. So we're back with more modifications to our LG air conditioner. So I have the double hose here for installation. This works great. One problem. I just did this on the fly. This is my little air return and honestly doesn't really move much air. And many, many people have made it clear in the comment section that it's stupid. And you know what? You're right. It is stupid. So we're doing a couple modifications to it today. First, I made a platform. A much sturdier platform this is leftover wood I found at Menards and I just tacked it together with some wood screws I would make a video about it but it took me five seconds to make the platform is at a tad angle going this way so the water goes out to my water pump modification so you can watch that in the description about how I modified this water pump it actually works great never had an issue with it at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the materials I went on Amazon and finally found everything I needed to modify it and yes we're working on the carpet here we really don't have much of a workshop at the moment this plastic piece will go into the window and I already clamped it down this is about a four inch hose uh, I'm still gonna be using some of the room air that goes through the AC unit but honestly it really depends on the temperature outside the temperature outside determines how much power this AC is going to use if the air going into the condenser is rather hot this thing will draw around 12 amps and we're on a power budget unfortunately and I mean power budget 15 amps for three bedrooms Whoever built this house should be ashamed. 14 gauge for three bedrooms, second story. But you know what? We got what we got to work with. Once the room cools down, this AC only takes around 8 amps. But sometimes it's not even that hot outside. But sometimes it is. And you want to regulate the airflow. No problem. I found this. This thing is awesome. I was going to get like a cheap plastic 3D printed one. But no, this is well worth its weight. Look at that. This is an air valve. It's even shiny. You open it up and you can adjust how much air you want to travel through the return. And see, it even has a silicone seal. So this thing's going to seal nice. So if it's like 100 degrees outside and the room's 80 degrees and I need to cool it down without, you know, drawing 14 amps, I'll keep it closed. But as the room cools down and the AC gets to its equilibrium, I could slowly start taking some outside air so I can get more of my BTUs back. Now, if it's nice outside, like 90 degrees, but, you know, the room's heating up because we have all these computers in here, right? That's why I have this portable AC. I open it all the way, and therefore, I get all 12,000 BTUs for my AC. Of course, I won't get it all until I seal the back because there's a vent in the back. I'll probably do a partial seal for now and see how that goes. But I still want to use some room air because, like I said, this AC takes a lot of power if that condenser gets too hot. It's just a downside of these portable AC. But to get this connected to the AC, metal on plastic doesn't go very well. So, I found this. It's plastic, it's shiny, it's four inches. I found this duct working adapter. This will connect it to this. Boom. And then for the hose, it's an insulated hose. It came with these two clamps here. The first clamp I already put on, it barely fits around here. It squeezes just perfectly. Um, it's best it's gonna get at least. Unfortunately, I do not really care for this hose design too much. It's a insulated duct hose used for like dryers. And honestly, it really is insulated. But unfortunately, it's very flimsy. But thankfully, it's only gonna go like a foot, like this. So honestly, it doesn't need to be strong. I decided to get a 16 footer just for the density of it and just for flexibility. With all these in mind, first what we gotta do is cut a hole in that back panel and get this piece sealed in there. Okay, so the first thing I did is I had to seal it. So I sealed the top and bottom. It's actually pretty sturdy, ain't going anywhere. And then just as a double marker, I marked close and open even though it's labeled on this nice label. I actually really like this label, like you can even tell you degrees. And then this right here is the marker for where you're currently at. Pretty cool, right? 
loving this thing. Now I'm gonna go trace the board and cut a hole in it and then we can get this thing installed. Okay, so right now we're letting this dry. For right now I'm using hot glue to seal it in, but once winter comes around and I take this out, I will probably use a more permanent solution, maybe silicon, but any recommendations in the comments are well accepted. Okay, so over here I took off the bottle cap and the plastic and I will be probably using, again, more hot glue for now and electrical tape to stick it on here. And then we still got this vent to take care of. I'll think of something for that. Okay. So it's finally done drying. This is what it looks like. It could definitely look way nicer. In the winter time, I'll come and redo this with silicone. We got the clamp on. And then over here, here's the flow valve. Yeah, that's on there really good, actually. I might secure it with aluminum tape just in case, but for the most part, I mean, this isn't going anywhere. Damn, that's pretty good. Now we just gotta go mount it. Gotta put the hose and everything back on. Hello everybody. So, right now I got it running right now. Uh, this six inches back, nice and cool, but if I feel under it's really warm, so it's definitely working. Um, and over here is our little air return. Now, I know it's a little loopy. I'm gonna have to twist it a little bit so it'll straighten out. It's, this is super springy. See, you can't like move it very much. But right now the air valve is completely open. Um, the four inch is actually working pretty good. A lot of air came through this thing a lot like already before I even put it on here. The air, I am still using some of the room air. I put this paper on top and so now I'm using an 80, 20 slash 80, 30 mixture. Like I said, I don't want to use 100% of the air from outside because sometimes it gets really hot outside. But for the most part, the air coming out of here is really cold. So, I mean, it's still working like it should if the condenser was being choked it would be really loud right now to be sucking a lot of power so I have it on max fan speed 60 degrees I'm using this little infrared thing I should be using a temperature probe 37 and then let's check the power out it uh, power usage okay so I got my kilowatt meter plugged in I have it on current so let's see what it's at Nine point nine ten amps. So far, it's looking pretty good. Make sure my valves open. Okay, and we're gonna watch it. I'll be back in like three minutes once this thing starts to settle. So right now on high, it's at almost twelve amps. So right now it's at its rated current. The room is like seventy-eight degrees, so it is working pretty hard. For this reason alone, I like to put the fan on low when I first start it up. That allows the room to slowly cool down, giving the AC some time to, uh, you know, drop its current. But yeah, at 11.5 amps, that puts us roughly around 103 volts down. <laughs> Which on my battery backup here is measuring around 113 volts. So over here, it's a lot better story. Okay, after running it on low for a bit, I'm at 11.1 .1 amps, so it's definitely starting to drop now. Now I'm going to close the valve and see how it, uh, see what happens to the amps. Oh, they're still dropping, damn. Wait for it. There you go, it's starting to go back up now. Oh, it's, it's, it's equalizing, wow. Now if I open the valve, let's we'll see what happens. I just opened the valve now. There we go. Now it's starting to drop again. There we go. Look at that. Pretty cool. It does actually work. Okay, guys. So after running it run for a bit here, the room temperature started at 70, 79 degrees. Now we're at 76 degrees. The amperage was at 11.8, which is technically what it's rated for, but it has since dropped down to 11.2. We're at high fan speed, but if we lower down to fan 1, so lower the speed, you're going to see the voltage drop a lot. So now we're at 10.9. Now let's see if this valve actually does anything. We're going to close the valve. Okay. 
valve is closed. Let's see what happens to our current here. So we're starting to creep back up to 11 amps again. Yep, look at that. Okay guys, so this was definitely a success. I'll just go over how I did this because I did not really record as much as I wanted to because a lot of it was just really tedious. But I'll give you an overview of how you can do it. It's really easy, yeah, ignore all the aluminum tape. This is just to hold this down. Actually, it's really sturdy. This tape isn't even needed, but I just did it just in case. So I use this adapter. It's a four inch uh, duck adapter. It has like a little flap here. It's meant to screw into like the wall or something like that goes outside. It's really meant for like a hood vent. And then I used a coupler that goes from here to here. It's just a four inch duck working coupler. It allows the two pieces to come together. And then that coupler goes here. And then I have this valve, which I bought on Amazon. It's a duck working valve. This thing is awesome. I was going to buy a cheap plastic one, but no, 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 no. This is worth its money. And then I bought an insulated hood vent. Um, yeah, just a hood vent duct piece here. And I actually cut it shorter here, so there's like way less turbulence. I just go straight outside. And I just bought a four inch plastic circle thing. I think it's meant also for duct working, but I just cut a hole and traced it out, filled it in with some hot glue. Once winter comes around, I'll most likely be filling this in with silicone or some other material. And then of course I use a clamp here and I use tape to seal in this box here. A five inch hose and a six inch hose that goes over it. This hose really insulates the five inch hose and it actually works great. Like there's no heat coming out of here whatsoever. I don't feel anything. Same goes for this one. And then here's my kilowatt meter, which I'm keeping an eye on just to see how this thing handles the new upgrade. It was really chilly. Yeah, very chilly indeed. Put a new hose there for the water, and the pump's down there. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Finally did it. I know a lot of you guys were asking, hey, you should put an actual decent sized hose as the air return. And the room is indeed cooling down. Started at 79. And now we're at 75. I have two thermometers, one over here. And I also had this other one here by my desk. This one is reading a little colder because it's in the same pass of the air conditioner. But basically, they're going to be within five, six degrees of each other. So you guys, please comment down below if you have any questions about how it's been done. Or if you have any other recommendations of how I can make this even better. Please let me know down below and thank you for watching.